Hi friends, I'll ask you a question. Which is the most common arthritis that affects joints? Yes, it is osteoarthritis and today we'll discuss on imaging in osteoarthritis. The keywords which we'll discuss today will be osteoarthritis, degenerative joint disease, primary and secondary osteoarthritis, X-ray and MRI findings of osteoarthritis, joint space narrowing, sclerosis, osteophytes. Osteoarthritis O for old age. Old age disease is what osteoarthritis is known as because the incidence increases with age. So in old age what happens? The joints will be worn out. This is a wear and tear disease. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative joint disease which is more common at more than 50 years of age and at this age it is more common in females. And as I have already told you it is the most common joint disease and because of the wear and tear the weight bearing joints and the joints of hands which are most active always are most commonly affected in osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis can be primary osteoarthritis where there is no underlying joint disease or it can be a secondary osteoarthritis where there is an underlying specific condition within the joint which can lead on to secondary osteoarthritis. The pathology of osteoarthritis. As I have already told you, this is a wear and tear disease. Here there is a tug of war between destructive process and the body's reparative mechanism. And which of these predominates determines the osteoarthritis picture in that particular patient. Articular cartilage destruction is the primary event. So what happens is, this is a normal joint with the articular cartilage here. This articular cartilage will be destroyed and the destruction occurs more at this region where there is more focal stress or more weight bearing. This results in loss of turgor of that particular joint and it will lead on to joint space narrowing. The joint space narrowing will be asymmetric because where there is more weight bearing that area will be more narrowed. What happens with this joint space narrowing? It lead on to the articulating bone surfaces bare and the bone surface will rub against each other. This will result in increased microtrauma at these points and this can cause microfractures. Here the body's reparative mechanism sets in and there will be newborn formation to repair these microfractures. This newborn formation lead on to juxta articular osteosclerosis. This sclerosis is a characteristic feature in osteoarthritis. Remember in osteoarthritis though it is an old age disease it is not osteoporosis which is a characteristic feature of OM but juxta articular osteosclerosis or newborn formation which causes increased bone density is the characteristic in OA joint disease. Further progression in the disease process there will be more newborn formation and it will result in bony spur formations along the periphery, spur, bony spur formation and these are known as osteophytes, osteophyte formation. These are characteristic in osteoarthritis and what happens further progression of the disease will result in release of chemicals and proteins from the destroyed articular cartilage. This will float in the joint and this will incite an inflammation. This can lead on to synovitis. Also the repetitive trauma due to the rubbing bones will result in bone marrow edema and bone marrow edema like areas known as bone marrow lesions or BMLs which, which is seen in MRI. So these are the pathological findings in OA. With this in mind we can easily um, uh, explain all the radiological features of osteoarthritis. Coming to the distribution, as I have already told you, this affects mainly the weight bearing joints. Weight bearing joints like the hip joint, the knee joint and the foot. 
also the spine and particular involvement is the hands hands actually the most common site is the first carpo metacarpal joint and this you may get an uh, as a mcq for your uh, entrance examinations other joints involved are dip distal interphalangeal joints and the this is the distal interphalangeal this is the first mar uh, carpo metacarpal joint and the proximal interphalangeal dip and pip involved interestingly metacarpophalangeal joints are not involved or these are the least involved joints of the hand OA. Coming to the radiography, there are five characteristic features. First one is asymmetric joint space narrowing as I have already told you. The joint will be narrowed which is more pronounced at the site where there is more weight bearing. So there will be joint space narrowing and Adjacent to the joint space narrowing, there will be bone microfractures which can lead on to juxta articular sclerosis. Juxta articular sclerosis and at the margins there will be formation of bony spurs known as the osteophytes. So asymmetric joint space narrowing, juxta articular sclerosis and bone spurs known as osteophytes. These are hallmark in osteoarthritis and in a particular x-ray if you don't find all these findings of OA you should consider another diagnosis that is importance of these three findings. Other findings include subchondrosis which are formed due to synovium invaginating into the bones. These are known as geodes which are commonly seen in osteoarthritis. One more feature is lack of osteoporosis. As I have already told you, even though this is a disease of old age, osteoporosis is not characteristic but it is juxta articular osteosclerosis. Now we will see some of the beautiful x-rays demonstrating the OA findings. This is a normal uh, knee joint showing normal knee joint joint space and here there will be joint space narrowing asymmetric this is more pronounced at the more weight bearing areas in the knee joint this is a medial compartment which is more involved adjacent to the joints there will be areas of sclerosis sclerosis is the increased bone density here you can see increased bone density also there will be bony spurs small osteophytes seen projecting from the bone surface osteophytes this is a x-ray of hip showing OA hip, there are small lytic areas into the bone. These are known as subchondral cis formation or geodes. OA hand is very important. Here you can see OA involving the DIP and PIP. There is joint space narrowing and small cis are seen and increased bone density. Juxtaarticular sclerosis and small bony projections. Bony projections characteristic of OA hands. About OA hands, in OA there are certain osteophytes which carry certain eponyms at certain sites. So uh, there can be uh, knobbly firm swellings which can form in association with the joints. In the distal IP joint it is known as Heberden's nodules and the proximal IP nodule uh, IP joint it is known as Bouchard's nodules. For, uh, for this, I used uh, I used to remember it like BP. Bouchard's for the proximal IP joints. And the distal IP joint, you can see osteophytes, Heberden's nodule. This is the proximal IP joint known as Bouchard's nodules. This is OA of the spine where you can see joint space narrowing joint space narrow uh, I mean the intervertebral disc space narrowing narrowing and the, of the spine actually the facial joints are predominantly involved and this can undergo facial joints are involved and this can undergo lysis and it can result in vertebral uh, subluxation and these are osteophytes anterior 
osteophyte coming to mri findings mri is the gold standard for the diagnosis of osteoarthritis why because it shows all the early changes it picks up early changes uh, particularly the bone marrow edema bone marrow lesions edema like areas in mri known as bone marrow lesions or the bmls also contrast enhanced mri is very good at demonstrating synovitis capsulitis we will see some of the mri findings these are the uh, juxta articular bone marrow edema seen as bone marrow lesions or the bmls in mri mri can very well show cartilage the uh, destruction especially with advanced mri imaging techniques we can quantify the cartilage destruction and assess the disease progress this is synovitis which is very well demonstrated in contrast enhanced MRI as this worm like area. This is thick and inflamed synovium which is enhancing with contrast enhanced MRI. Other imaging modalities which are useful in OA are USG particularly useful in peripheral superficial joints to look for joint effusion. Also it is useful in uh, guided uh, USG guided intraarticular injections, aspirations, etc., for diagnosis. CT it is of particular use in the osteoarthritis affecting the spine, particularly involving the facet joints. Another imaging modality useful is radionuclide imaging. It can be either bone scintigraphy or PET imaging. In this, an actively inflamed joint will show an increased radio up uh, uptake. We will discuss a few MCQ related to OA. Joint which is not involved in osteoarthritis is PIP, knee joint, MCP, DIP. As I have already told you, MCP is least commonly involved in osteoarthritis. The part of the knee joint most commonly involved in osteoarthritis, it is the medial compartment because this is the area where there is most weight bearing. Thus, we will reca recap the imaging findings in osteoarthritis. OA is the most common form of uh, arthritis and uh, it causes, it is a degenerative joint disease. It can be either primary without any underlying joint disease or it can be secondary with the predisposing fact to cause osteoarthritis. Articular cartilage destruction is the primary event and this affects mainly the weight bearing joints and the joints of hands of the hands, the first carpometacarpal joint, DIP, PIP involved, MCP is usually spared. And imaging modalities, X-ray is the mainstay of diagnosis. MRI is the gold standard for the diagnosis of OA. CT is used, USG for the peripheral joints and the guided aspiration and injections. Radionuclide imaging which show active intake or active uptake with an actively inflamed joint. The characteristic radiography findings are joint space narrowing which is asymmetric, juxta articular sclerosis, marginal osteophytes, subchondral cysts or geodes and there is lack of osteoporosis. MRI shows synovitis, bone marrow edema and bone marrow lesions. Thank you. Document.